guys, welcome to another tutorial. Today, we are gonna be working with this awesome Lion Brand Rewind Tape Yarn. Now, this is a really interesting yarn, one that I'm gonna cover in deeper detail on the podcast this week, so you wanna tune into that. Um, but it's a really interesting fabric, and it is made of 70% polyester, 30% viscose. Um, you would think that it would be fragile to work with, but I was rough and tough with this yarn in creating this design, and I think you're gonna like what I came up with. So right here before me is a super fun tote bag. It's really hard to get all into the screen, but it features the Tunisian honeycomb stitch, which just looks spectacular in this rewind yarn and today i'm going to show you how to do the front panel and then also how to um, do the bottom uh the bottom and the side panels here are worked in the exact same way so the bottom and side panels feature the tunisian knit stitch so it looks like a stocket net this would be the bottom panel as we make our way around the bag we can see here's the side panel mimicking the exact same stitch and then I topped it off with my cute yarn hook needles tag and this leather uh, handle that I got. So all this stuff is going to be linked down below. And not only am I going to show you how to do the panel and the size, I'm going to show you how to attach them because obviously I'm missing those pieces. I got to put that back one on and then this other side panel. And then if you want to purchase the PDF, I will have an extra special link inside the PDF that shows you how to line the bag with fabric. So that'll kind of be the incentive if you want to purchase the PDF. So without further ado, head down below, get your material list, and we are going to dive right into this pattern. As I just mentioned, the side panel and the bottom panel of the bag are made in the exact same way. So uh, real quick, just to give you an idea of what we're doing. So we have our two rectangular front panels that do the cool honeycomb stitch. We've got two of those. Then we have our base panel. We have one of those. And then we have two side panels like this, and we've got two of those. So these two are made in the exact same way. Uh, the counts are just different for how many you cast on. So what I'm teaching you today is um, one of these and one of these. So we're gonna start right here with this one. To begin, we make a slip knot. And then we're gonna cast on or chain 25. So one, two, three, four, five, Okay, so now that we've got 25, we're gonna set up our foundation row. And this is real simple. Even if you've never done Tunisian crochet before, you can totally do it. So in the second chain from the hook, this one doesn't count. This, this is the first and this is the second. You insert your hook, yarn over and draw up a loop. And so we're gonna collect all these stitches, the loops right here on our Tunisian hook. Go into the next one, yarn over, draw up a loop and continue this pattern all the way across. So once you've got all your loops on your hook, we just did a forward pass, that's what that would be referred to as, and now we're gonna do a backwards pass. So the way this works, and these rows are worked the exact same way, um, you yarn over and pull through the first loop, and then from here you yarn over and pull through two loops at a time. Just yarning over and pulling through two loops at a time as you make your way back across, and this is technically referred to as the standard reverse row. So 
So once you've completed the standard reverse row, now we move on to the actual stitch pattern. And the stitch pattern is like this. We're always going to have this one loop on our hook. I don't do chain one. Some people do do that. I find that it doesn't give me as crisp of an edge, which is what I'm always looking for. Um, so I do not chain one. I just leave that there and we just work continuously back and forth. So the knit stitch or the Tunisian knit stitch has worked as such. Right here, you can see there's this vertical bar. And if we kind of pull these apart, you can see that there's a space right there. There's the vertical bar that's behind this one. So there's actually two strands there. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna insert your hook in between those two, yarn over and draw up a loop. And we're gonna do that again. You can see there's a strand there and a strand there. You insert your hook in between those two strands yarn over and draw up a loop. And make sure that you're drawing up that loop the height of this initial loop on your hook. Otherwise, it's gonna be really, really tight and you're gonna get frustrated and find it challenging to do. So again, you just insert in between those two, yarn over, draw up that loop, and continue making these Tunisian knit stitches all the way across. And if you find that you like this stitch, I do actually have two Tunisian crochet patterns that I think you might enjoy. One is a cardigan and one is a shawl or a scarf or whatever you wanna call it. Um, and it features this gorgeous stitch. This is one of my favorites because of how much it looks like knit stock and knit. So you just continue all the way across. And again, this stitch is worked on the base panel and both side panels. And you do this all the way across. Right here, I wanna mention in this last row, you aren't going to work a knit stitch. You're actually gonna grab both of these loops right here and I'll show you what I mean. So there's kind of three strands all together right here at the end. So you wanna make sure that you're not just going through one, but rather you're going through both of those strands there on the end like that. And so you would have a V on the side so the last stitch is worked normal and that's, you don't work whatever the stitches that you're doing over here in the pattern and that's because we wanna have a nice crisp edge. So again, as we do the standard reverse row, it's the same, it's a yarn over, pull through one, and then yarn over and pull through two all the way back across. Okay, so we've made it back across and already we can see the formation of that knit stitch happening. So from here until the end of the row, and I did make a note, you're gonna have 25 Vs going across the front of your work, but in total, if you're counting forward and backwards passes, it'll be a total of 50 um, rows that you will complete. So I'll show you once more on this row. It's just an insert your hook in between those two stitches, yarn over and draw up a loop, the height of the loop you already have, and continue with those Tunisian knit stitches. And as you can see already, we can see those little Vs that mimic that uh, knit stocket net already beginning to form. So just such a cool, fun, stitch pattern, one of my absolute favorites in Tunisian. And honestly, this bag combines my two most favorite stitches, aside from Tunisian cables. I'm a sucker for cable knits, cable crochets, and cable Tunisian crochets. The Tunisian knit stitch and the Tunisian honeycomb stitch are hands down my favorite. And if you find that you like the Tunisian honeycomb stitch, I actually designed a dress, um, not maybe two years ago, using this exact, uh, using the honeycomb stitch. So you might wanna check that out. So remember once more, as we get to the end of that row, we wanna make sure that we grab both of those strands on the end. So we insert our hook, don't just go under one, go under both of them, pull it over your hook like that. 
yarn over, draw up a loop, and as you can see, we've got these nice crisp stitches on the end, and that's exactly what we want. And then for our standard reverse row, remember, these are always work the same. It's just a yarn over, pull through one, and then for the rest, it's a yarn over, pull through two. All the way across, and just be careful not to pull through three like I just did. Just two. Alrighty, so now that you know how to make those three panels that we talked about right here, go ahead and go make all three of those panels and come back to the video and I'm going to show you how to make the big honeycomb panel. Then I'm going to teach you how to assemble it. And if you want bonus when you buy the PDF, I'll teach you how to uh, put a lining, a fabric lining inside the bag. So go make your three panels, come back, join me, and I'll show you how to make this one. Okay, so as you come to your last row, this is how you're going to cast off or end the row. So you're just going to insert as if you were going to make a knit stitch, draw up a loop and pull through. So we cast off that stitch. So you insert as if to make the Tunisian knit stitch, draw up a loop and pull through. So this, as we go along here, you're able to see those stitches are off our hook. So we're al only always keeping one loop on our hook because we're closing or casting off those stitches to secure them so that we can prepare and be ready to weave in or attach and then weave in our ends. So that's how you would do this for all the panels. Regardless of what stitch you have done, this is how we finish off and close the rows. So once you do this on your two sides and bottom panel, I am going to show you how to create the big panels or the honeycomb sides of the panels. Once you get to the end, you're going to cut yourself a long enough tail yarn over and pull that all the way through and then you've got a done panel and don't worry about the curling because this is going to be attached on a bag and that is totally not going to happen so don't worry so now all you're going to need to do is do a chain of 75. i said you're going to need to do a chain of 75 i misspoke you need to do a chain of 76 i'll make sure to include little asterisks everywhere i said do a chain 75 but just chain 76. Once you have all 76 panels, we're just gonna set up our rows by creating just the base of the Tunisian crochet, which is just an insert your hook, yarn over and draw up a loop. And we did 76 chains, and that's how many loops you should have on your hook once you reach the end. You should have a total of 76 loops on your hook. So do this all the way across. All right, so once you have gotten all of those on, we're just gonna work the standard reverse row. And like I showed you guys, it's a yarn over, pull through that first one. And then every one thereafter, it's a yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And just keep doing those yarn over, pull through twos all the way across your work until you get back to the beginning. Okay, back at the beginning of our row, and this is where we start the honeycomb stitch. So we're going to be working in a combination of Tunisian simple stitches and Tunisian pearl stitches. So we're gonna start right here in this first one with a Tunisian simple stitch. And all you do is right here behind this vertical bar, you're gonna insert your hook, yarn over and draw up a loop. Next, you're going to put the yarn in the front. We're gonna work a purl stitch. So our yarn is worked in the front. Slip under that same bar Take your yarn, bring it down and around and wrap it like that and pull it through. So as you can see, we have a bar here and we kind of have a bump right there. So after the bump, we do a Tunisian simple stitch again. It's put your hook right there behind the bar, yarn over and draw up that loop. Then we're gonna work a Tunisian pearl stitch right there. So you bring your yarn to the front insert behind that vertical bar, take your yarn, bring it down and around up over the hook and pull it through. 
So again, you can see right here, you've got a bar, a knob, a bar, a knob. So we work a Tunisian simple stitch again, and then work a Tunisian purl stitch, bring a yarn to the front, insert behind that bar, bring the yarn down and around and up over the hook, just like so. So you see the pattern. There's a bar, there's a knob, bar, knob, bar, knob, and you repeat this process all the way across. Just remember there's purl stitches. Begin with the yarn brought to the front. front. So there's a Tunisian simple stitch. Bring your yarn to the front. Insert under that vertical bar. bar. Bring the yarn down, around, and up over. Pull that through. And you're gonna do that all the way across. And once you get to the end, pop back on and I'm gonna show you what to do in the very last stitch. Okay, so we just ended that last stitch with a purl and remember you've got these two little uh, lines right here that kind of form this V and always in the very last stitch, you work it just like normal. Go ahead and grab under both of those, yarn over and draw up a loop. And then your standard reverse row is worked exactly the same way. Just a yarn over, pull through one, and then yarn over, pull through twos all the way across. So complete your yarn over, pull through twos, and I'll meet you back for the next round or row. All right, so once we're back to the beginning, we can easily see kind of what needs to happen. So if we look at the row below, we realize that we did a Tunisian simple stitch right there. So we need to start off with a Tunisian purl stitch. And the way we can tell this is, do you see how there's a line and then a little bump? a line, a little bump, line, bump. You wanna do the opposite of what's below. So the line means you did a Tunisian simple stitch and that means you need to work a Tunisian purl. So bring your yarn to the front, down and around, wrap it over the top, and then purl into the next one. I'm sorry, Tunisian simple stitch into the next one. Then bring your yarn to the front, we're purling. And then Tunisian simple into the next one. So as you can tell, you can already kind of see those little honeycombs beginning to form. You want to do like in the windows of one another. So we've got two simple stitches right there. We've got a purl right there and I'll bring it slightly closer just so you can see what I'm talking about. So there's a knob and there's a knob. You have a vertical bar, vertical bar, vertical bar. The vertical bars right here, I'll bring it slightly closer, these vertical bars right here, those are the Tunisian simple stitches. And these little knobs right there, those are the Tunisian purl stitches. So let me work a purl up close just so you can see. So I brought my yarn to the front, insert my hook, bring the yarn down and around and wrap it over, pull through, okay. Then we do a Tunisian simple stitch right there in that previous row's Tunisian purl. Insert your hook and draw up. So hopefully you're able to see the pattern a bit better. There's a purl, there's a Tunisian simple, purl, Tunisian simple, purl, Tunisian simple. So you go back and forth with that um, purl and Tunisian simple all the way across. Okay, and as we get to the very end, don't forget, you need to work a simple Tunisian right there in that last one. And then you wanna grab those two stitches on the end, just like that, yarn over and drop that loop. And then from there, it's just a standard reverse row, which is yarn over, draw through one, and then yarn over, draw through twos, all the way across. So we're back again, and then so begins the repeat of the third forward pass row. So pop quiz, if that is a what stitch? If you said Tunisian pearl, you're right. So what do we put in the Tunisian pearl stitch? We do a Tunisian simple stitch. 
And so just let those previous row stitches be your guide. So you can tell that this is a Tunisian simple, so we're going to Tunisian pearl. And we do this all the way across, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, until we reach the amount of rows. And I combine the forward passing rows and the back passing rows. So I say all of them all together, just so you know how many, like one, two, three, four, I count that all the same, some people don't. But I do, and all of the instructions for all the panels are all on the blog post down below. Now, if you want extra stuff, which is how to add the lining inside the bag, that's gonna be in the PDF, and that's linked down below too. So once you get all your patterns done, come back. I'm gonna show you how to seam them together, how to attach the handles, and how to add a tag if you want. And then if you want that bonus, you'll wanna get the PDF to get the video link to find out how to add a fabric liner. So go make your panels, come back, and I'll show you how to attach them all. All right, so now that we have all of our panels made, I'm gonna show you how to easily attach all the pieces together. So as you can see, I've already got my side piece on, I've got my base piece on and I've got my like main front part. So what we're going to do first is I'm going to show you how to attach the handles. And this is just a tag I got and I'll tag the shop below in case you guys want to get tags for yourself. You don't have to, but um, in case you want to get tags below, I really like them. I've purchased from them for the last three or four years. Um, and I'll link uh, these handles too that I got. Um, but this is really simple, really easy. This is some leftover rewind that I had from the panel. And here is the other back panel. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to teach you or show you how to attach these handles onto this bag. Okay, so if we're looking right here and we want to try to make everything as symmetrical as possible and sometimes measurements are weird and get off a little bit. So what I do is I go based off of my rows right here. So if I'm looking at my bag, um, I can see this little button is right here on this row. So if I bring it up closer, I can see this row and these little lines right here are what I count. So I'm just going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So nine from the top is where I would want to make sure that the other button is. And then I'm doing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. So 10 lines across and nine lines down is where I want to put my button. So on this panel right here, we want to go nine down. So if we're looking at the top, uh, let's see, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So nine right there. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I need to move over one more and right there. So this would be the 10th one. So right here is where I would need to place my first strap right there. All I've been doing, and you can do this multiple ways, is I have some cotton yarn that I am using. I'm just using this cotton yarn right here and I'm cutting a long strip and then unthreading these or untwisting these like that. And that's what I'm using to sew in my, uh, my handles. All right, so I've cut this strand right here and I'm just going to, and you can use um, embroidery floss if that's what you have. I'm just trying to use what I have on hand and it uses so little yarn that I thought, well, I have this pretty cream color. I'll just go ahead and do that. All right, so really, really simple. This is how I do it. I make a little slip knot at the end. And again, you're not using like a ton of yarn. And then on this side, I'm gonna go ahead and trim that down to where that thread is. You like my kids craft scissors? My children love to get a hold of my good scissors. So I'm gonna thread this onto the needle, but obviously I need to mark my spot first. So taking this purple yarn right here, I'm just going to use a crochet hook. You can use a stitch marker, you can do this however you want. And I'm just gonna thread my yarn through just to mark my spot. 
so that I know where I need to put the little button. Threading the needle. And remember, we don't want to pull that tight because that's how we're going to um, fix it. So you guys are smart. <laughs> I don't think that you need like a ton of help, but this is just what I do. So I feed it through the back here and I just get, you know, as close as I can. And remember, this is the front of the bag. So, and I don't pull like all the way right there. Like if I hold this. I just kind of pull close, always making sure that I'm adjusting stuff, making sure that my button is right there. I'm gonna go into the next one. And as I feed that through this side, I'm gonna take that little loop that I just made, put that over, whoops, put that over my needle. If I can grab it, there we go. And I'll feed this through and then I pull it tight and now that little spot is nice and secure. So my goal now is to just make sure that I'm keeping my handle on the right spot. And once you make your way all the way around, so you're going to skip the stitches. So you go in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out like that. And then you go back around again to give you, let me find the other panel to give you this solid look. So at first you're gonna have skipped spaces and then when you make your way back around, you'll close up those gaps. So go ahead and do that and then I'll show you how I finish it off. So just in case you didn't understand what I meant when I was saying come back around. So my thing is pretty secure now. I don't have to worry about it flopping out of place. So I came to the end and now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work my way back around to ensure that I have that solid seam line. And you do kind of have to, you obviously want things to be tight and you'll have to manhandle it a little bit. But so now I'm gonna come up out of that space right there. I'll come up out of there. And I'm going to go back down. And so this is all you're doing. You're, you're filling in the spots where the stitch didn't initially go through. So just do that. Work yourself back around and I'll show you how I finish it. Alrighty, so I have seamed everything right there. And now we're just going to secure this. And all I do is I just take this and just kind of go right over the spot where I was. And I just weave back and forth real simple. And for those of you that know how to do this, you can skip ahead to see, you know, how to seam the actual bag together. I just want to include this for anybody that maybe hasn't done this type of a thing before. And they're like, what do I do? All right. So this has got a, a little bit of a loop here. So that last one, I just pull it through. And then taking the two ends, because I'm back to where I started, I just tie them together like so and just do two really good knots and remember um, you have the option of lining this bag if you want okay so once you've gotten that on you're gonna do the same exact thing to the other side so get that attached and then we're gonna seam this whole thing together and that way we can start enjoying our fun bag Right? So go see or go sew on your other handle and then hop back over here and we're going to join the other two panels onto the back. Okay, so we've gotten our handles attached and now it's time to start attaching these fun panels. So here's what I like to do. Since we've got to join it to the bottom and then come up the side, I want to start here. And you should have the same amount of stitches. You might have to stretch it out a little bit to make it match, but you should have the same amount of stitches going there and then the same amount of stitches here. Again, you're gonna have to stretch it out because the stitch for the side panels is a little more dense than the honeycomb stitch. So I'll show you the first couple of stitches and how I do it. And it's really simple. I have, like I said, this little leftover spool of rewind yarn. And 
It's really, really simple. So once you get that on, the main thing is just line up your stitches and make sure that everything is laying flat. So you wanna make sure that your little V's look like V's and not A's. We don't want A's, we want V's. So it's a little finicky at first, obviously, because you're working with so many uh, panels and stuff's kind of floppy at first. But just start here at the corners, okay? So right here, I'm just gonna pull through quite a bit. And then I leave it attached to the ball until I've got my amount. And then I'm just gonna snip it right here. Leave that right there. Just kind of hold it in place. And we're gonna come up here and we're gonna grab our corner of our seam. And we're just gonna pull all that yarn, cause remember we're going like making an L. So we're gonna have a little bit extra cause we're not just doing this bottom part. Okay. So now I'm reaching over and everything's gonna kind of like look the same at first, but don't let that deter you. You can totally do it. So we're just sliding our seaming needle underneath these V's. So there's a V and then right across is another V. So we're just gonna pull that tight. Make sure not to get any extras in there, okay? And then do the same thing. Find the next V up above it. And again, this is tedious because obviously we're slowly making our way up the bag. So just find those V's, make sure all the strings are out of the way. And then find the next set of V's. So we just went there. So now we're gonna go here and here. And we're just gonna do this all the way up the bag. So you're gonna work all along here. This'll be that part. And then this is gonna fold up and this will be that part. So again, look for those V's to find the seam and just make sure you're just kind of pulling everything tight. You want to leave that long enough because we're going to sew that in at the end. But just look for those V's. So there's the V. And see, we came out of that V. So we're going here and here. And pull that over. And then we're just going to pull everything tight. Just like that. So do that. Make sure you don't get any little tails kept in there. Do that all the way across the bottom and then up your side. And then we'll put on the final panel and I'll just give a brief refresh um, if you need to on that side panel. And then come back and I'll show you how do we So we it. have got this part of the panel uh, done. We've got both of our sides, we've got our base and we've got our back. And now we're gonna take our other panel and just make sure that the right side is facing out so your handles are on the outside of the bag. And you're gonna start up here in the top corner. You're gonna sew just like we did all the way down here to this corner, right there. And then you would go straight across the base of the bag over to this corner and then come straight back up. And then you would take all these little tails and as you're sewing, just make sure like all those tails are pointed on the inside. And if you purchase the PDF, I explained how to add a fabric lining to the bag. So all those tails would be hidden underneath that fabric lining that you attach to the bag. And then once you get this whole thing sewn, you are totally done. So I'm gonna sew it on and I'm gonna show you like the finished product of the bag. All right, friends. So once you've got everything seamed and all your ends woven in, this is what your bag looks like. This is it just kind of folded in place. Um, I really, really love it. I'm very proud of this bag. This started off as an idea in my brain and it just worked out perfectly, which is always the best type of project. Like I said, if you purchase the pattern PDF, I explain how to add a fabric liner to the inside. And what's even more awesome is if you make this as your project bag, look at that space in there. So much space. 
so much space. I just love it. And if you want to do this yourself, again, I've got the handles linked down below. I've got the uh, Etsy shop where I purchased this tag. This honestly was just some scrap yarn that I picked up from Joanne in one of those uh, fat quarters, I believe is what they're called. Um, just those little squares that you can buy. Um, super simple. You just need two of them. But yeah, I hope you guys like this bag. It was such a joy to create. I hope that you enjoy it. And with that being said, like this video, give it a thumbs up. Helps me so, so much to grow as a maker and help get more people uh, familiar with my designs and products. And yeah, that's it. I'll see you guys in the next video.